Now for this talk, we're going to, we'll have some more questions at the end. Um, we're going to move on now to Adam Rowe, or Rowe, I'm not sure, Rowe, um, who's the manager of the South East Wales Biodiversity Records Centre um, and is representing the local environment record centres for Wales. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I presume I just... That's not right, is it? Arrows only. Okay. So, um, my role today is to talk about the uh, LERC network in Wales um, and to illustrate, hopefully, how that uh, contributes to the evidence base in Wales and how important uh, the data that we hold and manage and share is to making good decisions and good management uh, of the Welsh environment. Um, I attempted to um, quote from uh, one of Wales' top philosophers, Keris Matthews of Catatonia. She said, every day when I wake up, I thank the Lord I'm Welsh. Well, I'm not Welsh, but I do thank the Lord that we live in Wales, we work in Wales, and we've got this fantastic um, set up in Wales now, and we're forever grateful. It's a brilliant scale to work at, as you'll see in a minute as I talk about some of our Wales-wide initiatives. Um, I'm going to briefly whiz through quite a few of these slides because I've, I've got far too many slides to squeeze into 20 minutes, but luckily a lot of what I've put in is also, has already been covered by Barney and Helen. So I'm going to look at uh, the history of LURCs and then looking at growing evidence base and partnerships uh, for biological recording in Wales, and then looking at maximising the uh, use of the evidence base that we've uh, accumulated, and then perhaps look a little wider at how we, uh, some of the bigger issues around collaboration and cooperation. So um, in terms of the history of local record centres in Wales, uh, I was lucky enough to be appointed the first manager of a local record centre in Wales in, in 2000 um, when uh, the Biodiversity Information Service for Powys and Brecon Beacons National Park was established. Uh, and we were part of the NBN uh, linking local record centres project. It was set up as a pilot local record centre for Wales alongside ones in North East Scotland and Cheshire and the other countries. Uh, and during the life of that project, um, the project officer of the time undertook a consultation exercise on a vision for local record centres in Wales. And even at that very early stage, um, the need for partnership working was highlighted. It mentions that from the outset, LRC should look to each other for support and consider sharing skills and expertise, which sort of sowed the idea early on about uh, collaborative working. Um, ultimately, over the period 2000 to 2007, four individual and independent local record centres were established. Each is a private company limited by guarantee, not hosted by any uh, separate body. Um, all four represented here today, so hopefully you'll come and find us and talk to us if you have questions about what we're doing. Um, so we were aware, having completed this network, that we were the first uh, complete national network in the UK. And so we celebrated by coming together and forming a sort of loose coalition, the Local Record Centres Wales Network. And uh, in 2007, in this very building, um, the network was formally launched by the then Environment Minister, Jane Davidson. Uh, we worked together to, to establish a web presence. Um, we have a landing site where people can easily work out which record centre they should be dealing with for a particular uh, function, whether it's submitting data or uh, requiring data from an inquiry. Uh, and we established a shared vision, which obviously um, is too, too detailed to read, but it was to, to make sure we focused our efforts together and worked uh, collaboratively and efficiently. Now, this is actually a really dull slide, but it, it's quite a brand, groundbreaking thing when the, uh, the four record centres decided to formally uh, collaborate, and we formed a, um, a cooperative, I can't remember the, the proper word, for the, uh, uh, the consortium, the consortium, which is the Local Environmental Record Centres Wales Limited. And this body allows us to negotiate our national contracts as a single uh, entity. Um, the, the company is set up with uh, the four record centres as corporate directors, plus the, the legal requirement to have another named individual person. Uh, and it's been working really well. It's been in operation for two years and has helped us enormously with securing national uh, contracts within Wales and uh, streamlining administration. Um, just for a bit of a, a laugh, I, uh, this is the photo from 10 years ago and the equivalent photo from uh, our 10th anniversary celebration which took place uh, in Carmarthen in the summer. And uh, it's, it's a shame it's a little dark because it's, it's a little uh, sort of a children's game where we sort of try and match people up, but I did it, did it for you, some of the colours there. It's five, five of us have survived the entire 10-year uh, um, period. Um, there's actually huge staff uh, retention uh, in, in local record centres in Wales. And there are a few other guests in that top photo who are no longer in Wales, but are uh, dotted around other parts of the country. When I say no longer with us, I think people are all still alive, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So uh, growing the evidence base is my next uh, area I want to talk about. Um, we, unfortunately, because the uh, consortium was only formed two years ago, we haven't collated the sort of zero to 10 million uh, biological records graph that we would have for the whole of Wales, but the uh, representative uh, graph from SUBREC um, is, uh, shows the growth for, to up to nearly 4 million records in our region over, the, over recent years. Um, and just to sort of watch how this data accumulates and how it grows, these are only a few slides from the last four years, but as I progress through, you'll see the, the area darkening as the number of records per kilometre square increases. I'm going to, just to cue my eyes, I'm going to go back through there so you can watch it again. Um, so filling the gaps in knowledge. And when you focus in on the protected and priority species, and this is the stuff that people really need to know for their planning applications and their decisions, um, you'll find there's really excellent coverage, of a, a real dense coverage of priority and protected species within our region. Um, the, uh, the city of Cardiff is particularly well... Uh, uh, um, standing out there as, as a very dense area of, of records. Uh, the Gower, which is a, a honeypot site rather than a highly populated site. Um, we've done, now that we've uh, formed this consortium, we've also merged our data sets. So the four local environmental record centres share a merged data set. And so we're now in a position where we can start to do analysis and mapping of um, the, uh, the Welsh data holdings, the 10 million records and starting to do um, heat maps, etc. Uh, the very first time I showed this, everyone said, that just shows recording effort. And we're trying to demonstrate that that's not the case. We're starting to analyse. Uh, this is a new bit of analysis, uh, which is visits per one kilometre to square. This is just on the Subrec area. But you'll see that uh, squares have been visited and records have been made ranging between zero times up to 2,000 particular occasions where records have been made and submitted. So there is a, a great disparity of recording effort, and, but we can build that into our analysis as we build uh, a defensible evidence base that people are happy to use. Growing partnerships and recording has always been a vital piece of our work. And it's something I think is quite a unique selling point for the local record centre network. Um, we support this diverse range of vo local volunteer biological recorders. We assist them with data management. That could be software. It could be entering backlogs of paper records. Uh, we produce things like newsletters, um, which go to a, a wide audience um, and very popular for keeping the network informed. We uh, have initiatives like the Square of the Month in Subrec, where we help people, helping uh, encourage people to go and fill the gaps in our knowledge, find the less well-recorded squares, and so. Uh, that's been quite a useful um, little tool we've had and uh, likewise species of the month it's all about engaging with the people who are out there and who are interested uh, cobalt crust is our current species of the month a, a really nice species which is quite a common one no, turning up quite a lot in south wales um, we organize uh, recording field days and id events we, uh, we've received sponsorship from wales biodiversity partnership for the last uh, probably pushing 10 years to run a series of uh, species identification events each year and we have uh, field days where we bring the experts and the non-experts together to, to share knowledge and mentor each other and do some very good recording. Uh, obviously social media has been mentioned a lot already but really what, are, what we're all about is building this recording community, supporting the recording community and then seeking recognition for the vital role that the recorders play in propping up the whole of our data system in the UK. Uh, we've had hugely strong links with the public sector from day one as well, and I think it's worth mentioning Countryside Council for Wales, the predecessor of NRW, took it upon themselves to really strongly support the establishment of, and use of the local record centre network in Wales, and they treated us as a strategic partner and we received significant funding over the, uh, the, the early years of this uh, millennium and going up to, uh, in fact, last year when, um, the, for strategic reasons, the, the core funding for Welsh record centres has moved to Welsh Government, but that's great that we have now a direct funding relationship with Welsh Government as well, uh, at the same time retaining very close working relations with NRW, who still procure our data services and we still effectively treat as a strategic partner. Uh, the majority of local authorities in Wales uh, use LUCs through service level agreements. And I'm going to whiz through the private sector other than to say that for the first year ever last year, our private sector income for SUBREC overtook our public sector income. So we need to work more, engage more with the private sector consultants in coming years. I'm really pleased to see the lot of this next stage has been covered 
And so I can whiz through my slides because I was a bit worried about time. Um, but this Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the, the uh, Wellbeing Goals is driving all of our work in Wales. There are national indicators to monitor the success um, or otherwise of these policies. And there are two particular indicators which we hope our evidence will be used uh, to support um, the trends analysis with healthy ecosystems and a biodiverse natural environment. And uh, Barney's mentioned the Environment Wales Act, of, uh, Helen and Barney, and um, there's a lovely animation actually. Uh, the Welsh Government seem very keen on animations. If I, I really recommend going to Googling Wales Environment uh, Act and uh, watching the animations that they put together to explain how it, how it works and what it means to, uh, in, in accessible language. So there's the State of Natural Resources report, which um, Barney has already uh, shown us and which um, is just about to undergo its sort of second iteration work is about to start collaboratively in the next few weeks to produce the second uh, report and we hope again the look data will be uh, even more uh, made even more use of in the second iteration of that report the policy side boring but important area statements uh, are going to drive a lot of our work in the next few years um, they're beginning to be defined and work is beginning to happen at the local level to identify what needs to be taken into account in an area statement and this is their lovely graphic illustration of the enhanced biodiversity and ecosystem resilience policy from within that animation and many of you will be familiar with the uh, the old biodiversity duty it's still current in the rest of the uk um, it's uh, the NERC Act duty to say that public bodies have to have regard to the purpose of conserving biodiversity. Well, in Wales, now let's not just have regard, but seek to maintain and enhance biodiversity and to promote the resilience of ecosystems. So we're really hoping that the government um, implements these, these policies really strongly and, and actually has some uh, stick as well as carrot to try and encourage uh, proper uh, taking regard of and then maintaining and enhancing biodiversity. Uh, another boring slide, but this is to remind me to say that within Wales there's a, a Nature Recovery Action Plan, it's now branded, and this is how all of the bodies in Wales, public, private and uh, NGOs, coming together to implement all of these actions into a, a, a series of uh, working groups which will hopefully deliver um, real progress on the ground as a result of all this legislation. Obviously the proof of the uh, pudding is in the eating over the next few years. Uh, very quickly now, um, I'm going to just show you how our own data is used at a local and operational level. We've got this website called Aderin, which has been in development for, for several years. It's the, the second iteration of a website which we first launched uh, three or four years ago. And it provides direct online access to our Look Wales evidence base. It's developed in Powys by the Biodiversity Information Service. Um, it's available to the public from 2016 and then from 2017 there are a huge range of modules, as we call them, which are available to a range of users. Ah, flying bird. That's the web address, which I'll put up at the end again if you want to scribble it down. Um, so there are, uh, on, anybody can visit this part of the website. There are two main functions, what's in my area and distribution maps. Uh, I guess I'm teaching how to suck eggs, but um, going into the uh, what's in my area, uh, you have a map-based system to scroll in, put a pin on the map and uh, generate a species list uh, one kilometre square resolution species list for, for your square. Uh, it says 394, is that different species were found, uh, eight sensitive species. So this is a public facing website, so we withhold the detail of the sensitive species. At that point, people can come to the record centre and submit an inquiry if they need it. And then the distribution map, obviously uh, self explanatory, but you can pop in a species name, get a, a, a Welsh distribution map up to date to within a few days. And then you can, for non-sensitive species, you can also drill down to get the one kilometre square distribution map. So have a play with that. It's great fun. Um, within uh, the sort of logged in access, I'm now, I'm now logged in, uh, we have data search functions which local authorities and other partners can use. So I've generated a data search based on the uh, lecture theatre that we're in. Um, records, 1,929 records within 500 metres. This is the amazing thing, is that say 0 0.61 or 0 0.81, anyway, less than a second to generate those records. That's what they look like, and through the Adarin website you can um, link through to the uh, Covnod's eMapper system, which allows you to interact between the map. You can click on a point and pull up the species record, or you can go scroll through the list of records 
and click on one and it pulls up the point and, and takes you back to the map and it's a real it's also a holy grail for uh, data delivery within record centers was to have a system like this where you could interact between report and, and map you can download the report in a range of formats um, you can produce confidential reports uh, as well as public safe reports if you like where the confidential information is, is uh, reduced the Adarian system also can be made to drive planning application searches across Wales. It's done for um, half of the planning application, uh, sorry, half of the planning authorities in South Wales and quite a few others across Wales. And we also now are developing the system and it's in, implemented in, in Powys to deliver our commercial inquiries via Adarian as well. So our outputs are a link to a website where you can view your data, interact with it. Um, Covenard produced this analysis of where the planning applications are that they've, they've scrutinised over the years since they, they've been in existence. What you'll notice is that there are an awful lot, 47,000 odd planning applications. Uh, this, is what a, this is what a non-funding local authority looks like. Sorry if there's anyone from Wrexham, but you know, planning, isn't being, uh, planning applications aren't being assessed for biodiversity impact there through the planning process. But when you look at the um, consultants' inquiries, the commercial inquiries that Record Centre has dealt with, 2,218 coven odds since they started, and you'll see that now Wrexham has become the, the largest area for uh, commercial inquiries. I think there is a relationship between the two, although only an equivalent number of 4.6% of all the, 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 the um, work that comes in is, uh, I can't, how am I phrasing this? 4.6% uh, of, uh, of, of commercial inquiries uh, compared to the 100% of all the planning applications that they receive. I very briefly want to just show, um, again, this, this is a Covenant example, but uh, they very helpfully went back to revisit inquiry number one from when they started, and it yielded 15 records, 12 species, and it took an hour and 15 minutes to generate that report. Moving through time, the most recent uh, version of the Covenant system delivered uh, many, many more records uh, in three seconds. Uh, so the systems, the, the improvements, the building of the development of our data management systems enable this sort of thing to happen. And obviously, the challenge at the moment is to how we integrate the Atlas data into this, uh, into our data products. We are, uh, as local record centres, we are deemed to be commercially operating, and so we're not uh, entitled to utilise the non-commercial licence data which is on the Atlas. But I hope I don't get into trouble. I clicked on it, and I can see that there are. Uh, out of the 7,000 records uh, within the same search area on the Atlas, 6,654 from the BTO. So uh, that's fantastic data, and obviously if you're a non-commercial user, you have full access to that. Uh, looking at the, the, the open access data for the same search, uh, there are small, much smaller numbers of data which we are able to use and will eventually build in seamlessly into the sort of one-stop shop data services, <laughs> although there is overlap, for example, the Briarfite data is already on the Alert Quail system. I want to leave with two slides. One, two messages really. One, data costs money to generate. You cannot have something for nothing. Uh, the, the, the work of local record centres is a liaising, collating, quality assuring verification managing this database, building these amazing systems that can output the data. Uh, this costs money, you can't have it for free. In Wales there was no real strategy for data management before the lurks took on the role. Um, and now we facilitate the movement of nearly a million records a year into the NBN. Um, obviously everybody wants more and, uh, more and longer term resources, but I think it's, uh, it's, it, we require that to be part of this evidence-based decision making in Wales. Uh, and we've got proven business models in, in Wales, and we, d we, deliver a lot, we deliver a lot of data to a lot of users in the private sector. And as far as I was aware, polluter pays was a good model, and this is bringing in public se private sector money to support conservation. And my final thought is around the open data subject, and I know these are things that will come up hopefully a lot more during the two days of the conference, but um, we totally understand open data should be open, especially where it's paid for by the taxpayer. But we passionately believe that volunteer data is different, and there are different aspects at play here. And access to volunteer data should be considered a privilege and not a right. Um, some of our recorders are very passionate uh, in, in ensuring that the LURC system is maintained and supported, and they believe that uh, the full and open sharing of data could be detrimental to the network as a whole. Um, and I believe LURCs are a vital node in the NBN. And there are our web addresses, and I'm happy to take questions later.